thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to provide a topic that's yeah really really close to to my heart and uh, it's really interesting because just as of today i yeah i needed a, a small change as my calendar was uh, uh, misleading and i thought i would give a speech tomorrow but uh, it's it's obviously it's today and uh, thanks to a very quick uh, change process with hello welt uh, it all worked out just fine but the changes I want to talk about today are like major changes, bigger changes. And uh, I was happy to hear this speech of Christine because many of the things she mentioned, especially in this large scale engineering companies, are exactly the kind of topics we deal with talking about changes, how to really implement that, how to really um, yeah, provide the people responsible with the right knowledge to actually do their work. And I think um, what uh, the what quote struck me most was documentation is a skill and um, we learn that all the time and um, yeah so i would like to shed a light on the following aspects today basically talking a little bit about change and not not giving a whole introduction into change management but what what i perceive as a change and what can be motivating for changes then talking about accountability or account and ability. And this is just a word play a friend of mine introduced. And I think it's pretty smart to really uh, go down that rabbit hole. And then about the role of the team. And last but not least, I want to talk about uh, methods and tools and how it all uh, interacts in a way. But before uh, I start, and uh, I think, Richard, thank you very much for introducing me and, and uh, telling a little bit about myself. Um, I would like to tell a little more about myself. So back in the days when I still used to have a haircut, um, I, I was an Air Force officer. And um, after graduating university, I worked at an air transport wing in, uh, near Hanover for, for quite some years. And we were the ones that introduced the A400M, which is a military transport aircraft. And it uh, yeah, superseded basically the old C-160 Transall, which uh, flew for 50 years. And this was quite a, ma a major change. Back in the days, it was uh, very popular because uh, all over the news, it was said that the A400M has its problems and we really struggled to, to, to make it fly, so to say. And um, yeah, but what was more interesting to me as I was at that um, time, first uh, chief of staff, basically for the technical um, yeah, division, and later on for the whole wing staff and that it was really just a major, major change towards how this whole airport, I would call it like that, operated. Because you can imagine the difference between a 60-year-old aircraft and a now yeah, somewhere between 5- and 10-year-old aircraft is quite significant. Technology uh, has changed drastically and... Um, with these technology changes, also organizational changes came and processual changes came. And basically everything was changed. New buildings, new people, new required skills. And I was uh, always in the position to, to manage those topics, talk to people and really try to embark them on a journey to the, to the next level. And um, that was quite an interesting experience. And it, it shaped also my, my future career. And forward after that, I started working as a project manager, for example, for Airbus and other aerospace companies and nowadays in more regulated industries as well. And, and changes and dealing with the topic is, is really interesting. And also, as Christina said, especially in automotive, changes are, are a topic that's uh, yeah daily and providing the right knowledge to be able to do that is, uh, is, is super important. And I can really share the point that uh, in, in this mechanical engineering companies, large scale companies, sometimes there is a gap in the sense that what she also mentioned that for everyone who's coding software, it's totally normal to have a documentation and a wiki in which you somewhat transfer it or have a, a quality management, which is a social component basically. And yeah, in the hardware producing industry, it's, mostly focused on documents. And um, you get documents by the approving agencies in aerospace, it's the EASA, the European Aviation and Space Authority. I think that's what the abbreviation is for. And they also provide you with documents. And when they ask you, they want uh, documents back. So it's for them sometimes perceived as like changing to another tool and then going back into the format that they, that they are used to. 
And nowadays I'm, I'm working for Generativ and we are a Zurich based company and we mainly deal with yeah, project management, product development and change management, risk management. I, I often like to call them the product development process supporting processes. It's a bit lengthy in words, but um, I, I th think you get the point. And one of the major topics actually is, is change management. And um, yeah, that's what I will also talk about today. And I already mentioned this word joke of accountability and accountability. So I think in most companies, it's pretty easy to be the responsible person for a topic whatever that might mean. So every everyone who's a consultant and or has worked with consultants knows about the RACI matrix or the RASCI matrix with, and you want the S for support additionally. So someone's responsible, the one that actually does the work, someone is accountable, who's to blame if the work goes wrong or something. And um, yeah, then they have the consulted person and the informed person. And the clarity of roles within the process is, is the first aspect to reach out. And I think we've already spoken about um, quality management and where those roles are a crucial factor. And um, the problem I often see is that uh, you get accountable for a task. So basically you have to do it or it's like, just get it done. But while in reality, you really lack the, yeah, the materials, the knowledge, the the, the real power to, to really get stuff done. And that's, um, that's the thing, I mean, especially in times where we live now, where we have a, a world where like time to market is expected to be faster and faster and faster, new features, if you're in software development, need to be shipped faster and faster, continuous deployment, continuous integration, but also in hardware developing and producing uh, industries, nothing's more outdated than let's say a car interior from 2014 or something. It's incredible how that changes and how to really react to that. And I think that's also why these new companies are so highly valued when it comes to, to the stock market, because they just provide the platform and they have a different approach than the typical, let's say, German uh, automotive manufacturer who has a head of, uh, I don't know, uh, the entertainment system ahead of this, ahead of that, and ahead of that, rather than thinking in a more globalistic and 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 um, way, and I think that's that the thing. So another really important aspect, not only having the hierarchical power to get your work done or to really deliver those inputs, often is knowledge, and knowledge is something, yeah, that for some reason mostly exists, especially in those big companies. If you're talking about Airbus, they have, yeah, I don't know uh, what's the century in, in thousands, thousands of years uh, a, a, um, experience in developing things and in, in making things fly. They have so much, so much knowledge, but it's hard for a new person to, who joins the organization to really get through that. And this is mainly due to the fact that it's mostly written in yeah, in documents and you really have to sit down and read that. And if you go for like for the fighter aircraft, just the handbook, how the program shall be managed in general has about a thousand pages and there's lots of those documents. And that's that's really, really a thing. And if you go to the next step, then you might be uh, fully capable and fully aware of what's happened to you. Then you have the problem that most uh, organizations are really yeah, working as as silos, let's let's say, and you can be good within your team to arrange a change. And um, for 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 the simplicity of it, let's say you have an engineering change. You want the aircraft to be painted red rather than than blue, for example. Then you can basically do that. But if you want to have the aircraft to have another shape, then you have to have lots and lots of people involved, lots and lots of silos, and this is um, yeah quite complicated. And to so stay with this aviation example, I often call it the ballistic working because it goes up on the one side, some people discuss, it goes down and then the same way back. So basically a ballistic curve in which the information flows and that's, um, yeah, it, it usually produces a lot of heat and friction, but um, if that's really what you want, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not completely sure. And as I said, and when you go to companies like Airbus or VW or other major, major companies, they know a lot. 
they really do but the knowledge is uh, mostly hard to access then there is the organizational topic that people are working in projects that they work in in their team sometimes they are in an excellence cluster and they do this and they do that the first problem they have is the overview and really being up to speed at all those topics at the same time and the, the thing is really that it's mostly it's a usability question and an accessibility question how to really de deal with that and, um, and from project management we all know that that you have to come up with um, yeah, a certain planning of how many resources you have for what percentage of the individual time but when it comes to change management it often yeah it, it often st stops right there because hardly any company really these days and it's i mean po the positive aspect that it's it's changing but back in the days hardly any company really in uh, included change management and the work related to change management into their project plans so whenever you saw a gantt chart it was like lots and lots of project tasks but dealing with the change is saying like what impact does the change have hardly ever to see and if this is a complicated topic you have a lot of knowledge to really um, go and uh, a lot of knowledge to really go through that's what i wanted to say and and see how how to work that and if the more complex it gets the more complex also it is to to really access all those knowledge and in that case, a knowledge base is really a, a helpful tool for, let's say, long-term memory. And when uh, Jira was a tool that was mentioned and uh, in in the last session, and I think uh, Jira is excellent for 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 mid-term memory or short to mid-term memory. But after this, it gets lost. So you have to have something to manage your task. It can be easy read mind. It can be write. It can be can be any task and and uh, issue management tool. But having really the transition into this long-term memory uh, is, is is a crucial is a crucial factor and that and yeah last but not least on, on this thing is really that within your team it's might might all all be fine but as i said if you work in silos it's it gets a little more complicated and if you go into the german abbreviation of team it's like for the ones that understand german it's like team is toll ein anderer macht meaning uh, great another one uh, another person does it and um, that's sometimes also quite challenging when you think about knowledge management and um, that everyone is afraid that the work is not done or doesn't um, doesn't get done but uh, in reality often it's also a problem that there's redundant work or work that's uh, going from one direction to the other and if you look at this group of people or of, of, of children uh, we really see that they all might have different motivations one is just smiling one is looking to the other direction the first uh, boy is pulling wholeheartedly and the other one is just maybe also laughing about how how much effort the first uh, person puts in there and um, for us it's about also making team collaboration based on knowledge possible and that's 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 uh, the thing and the question often where we get asked asked often is really how do you do it and is it really does it have to be all those manual work and in that case um yeah mostly not and the the the, the idea is that just use a tool and we'll get to that in 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 a, in a minute and what i think is a is a crucial factor also is uh, doing expectation management so when can what get done and until when that's mostly a question any management or any project manager ask when is it done it's not really that interesting for most people to know how much work how much details in there but for the people involved in doing all those details it's it's pretty pretty interesting and um but we we have had like a decade i think now or maybe even 20 years where everyone was going down that I, I call it the optimization rabbit hole so basically just optimizing 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 working on the efficiency rather than working on the effectivity and it's like nice that you uh, get faster and faster but if the road road leads you into a wall being faster not does isn't necessarily what you should be aiming for and if you really see how many 
drastic technology changes we've had in the last time. And I think ChatGPT is a it's a is an immense factor in that and immense immense showcase of how how things change and how yeah also technology changes. I think we have to have something that really has a long term memory also for changes in the sense of we tried it once and um, we had good reasons why we didn't go down that road. But in, in many companies, what I see is that after two, three years, management changes, people change. And that's also why I thought that, that Christine's point of uh, retention and uh, people staying longer in the company is super, super important. So when we get asked, sometimes it's really that we are not the type of consultancy that goes and say, like, you can save so many people but you can save so many employees so that the people stay with the company. And just recently I was at a large automotive supplier and they handed me and basically at the first day, like the good place or better place to work, I don't know what it's called, um, survey. And a major fact really was that everyone said like, there's so many tools and the knowledge isn't accept accessible. I have to have so many stupid meetings and sit down with people for things that could be an email or could be a, a post in the knowledge base. And um, yeah, we would really went down that hole and really set up a collaborative knowledge space for the team. And it had had quite quite an impact. And yeah. The standard answer when anyone asks, I just said it already, is just uh, how to get it done is just use a tool. But um, there are many different tools with many different focuses, different ob objectives. And I don't think there is this one size fits, uh, fits all thing. It's great to see that the pr product from, from Hello Welt, for example, is super versatile and can be adapted to many situations. It's, it's a stable system, is something that really supports in your, in, in your journey. And still, it's some work done on how you want to get the work done, not, not just what work do you want to get done, but how does the work get done. And I think it's not uh, simply mean uh, to, in order to be accepted. It, does, it means that you should really try to work on having the work manageable and the knowledge accessible. And I think that's, that's something that's really, really important. And, as I said, with uh, with the tool, we use it for, for many different use cases. Basically, it can be a collaboration space where you can come up with your knowledge for, for the organization in a, in a sense of a, even of a quality management system, but also of a social intranet kind of way. On a team level, you can use it for projects and for products. And that's also where it comes in again for changes. So if you have an knowledge that's accessible rather than having a SharePoint where you have like 100 versions of one document and they all just uh, different by by the end or someone puts a different date in front of it and the real uh, latest and greatest version is on the desktop of the project manager. I think that's uh, that's something that will not work in, in a time where projects, products and everything gets more complicated. And what's also good about having those tools in place is uh, that there's a rather simple handling and you have ex extensive integration possibilities. And what I mean by simple handling is like anyone who's tried to make a good looking document in, in Word, for example, and try to put in a picture. Uh, I think everyone knows what I'm, what I'm talking about. It just, yeah, you deal much more time with formatting than really producing content or really providing information that's necessary and helpful for your process. And in this case, I'm talking about the change management process. It's um, we've had projects where they documented their requirements in, yeah, basically more than a hundred pages of, of, of text. And it's really hard to scan through the whole document every time. And if it's like a bad version of it and the, the PDF export doesn't work, yeah, it's not really interactive and, um, makes makes life hard and what what else is, is good is that all the implicit knowledge that's in the head of the people and i said it airbus has has a thousands of years of uh, implicit knowledge and, and knowledge that their employees know becomes explicit meaning that also talking about retention again that the experts can really deal with the experts topic rather than being focused to to handle um calls or meetings for yeah, anything that's 
yeah, could be done by by someone else. So it's not uh, what what I often heard is that it's there's, there's the fear of the the experts that they aren't those myst uh, mystical um, people anymore. And uh, and in one company, I what they call them the druids or the yeah not the droids but the druids um, that really do the magic, but in order to be able to do the magic, it's good to get off the stuff that's not so magical. And in the end, it has to be done anyways. So also for them, it's 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 a path. And I've seen really people changing. Once they see that also the, the knowledge base established brings value for them, they like to contribute more. And yeah, in that way, it really grows because it's social uh, social pressure and adoption really somewhat interlinked pretty close. And the other topics we often also deal with with requirements management, and you can perfectly do that in a collaborative wiki system where you put put it together, where you have versions and really, really go, go from there. And as I said, our experience is, is really that every organization can, can be different. They all have different, um, different uh, targets, different goals. But what we see is knowledge is mostly available. M might it be in the head of people, but it's not easily accessible or not good to use. I have a, an example, for example, I worked for an engineering services provider back in the days. And when we, um, we got a, a job for a major American um, aircraft producer, basically, and it was reverse engineering of some filters for, for oil filters or something. And it was was a huge, huge project. And uh, all the documentations were badly scanned PDF files, which were copies of uh, documents that had originally been uh, issued in the 70s or something. So this typical typewriter uh, kind of style of documents. And it took so many, so many hours to really um, understand what was documented there. It was not, not readable back in the days when OCR tools weren't really helping all that much. It was, was, was stressful. And what we really did there was setting up a knowledge base so that once something was understood, it was understood not just by one person, but, but for the whole team. So they can access this knowledge as well and you can uh, distribute work better and more evenly. And um, yeah. And in this sense said, the to use of tools is very helpful and I think uh, even necessary. And back in the days when I was at the Air Force or in the Air Force, we didn't have tools like this. So I had a lot of Excel files. I had a lot of um, a lot of documents where I just had written down things. And it was so important to, to keep the knowledge uh, during that change process in the company or in the, in the organization that you really had to call people that had had new jobs all the time. And I think if they had had the chance to have a knowledge base in place, they could just have written most of those things down and would not be interrupted all the time. And coming back to what I said in the beginning, I think it's super helpful to have a flexible platform to really support this accountability and in that way also help to standardize good results. So we've heard about uh, quality management before and every time I say it's it's a standard, people often say like, yeah, but on top of standard, there's a premium and in um, quality management standard is basically the optimum that can be achieved. So you can do it over and over again, have the same expected good results. And in, in, in consequence of that, you will be a profitable and, and good company and be attractive to talent. And if you know how to manage your knowledge, you can also retain um, those those uh, talented people within your organization. And um, this is my sign. And I think we've sp spoken about no notifications in the session before. Uh, this is a sign I'm looking for. And uh, this is my sign to, to finish off. But uh, I'm, of course, here and available for any questions you might have. Mm -hmm.